While there are such factors that influence our muscle growth that we can control, like genetics, there's a proven blueprint to increase our muscle growth and see results in a gym. Here today, I want to share with you the insights I got from paying literally thousands of dollars for my fitness certificate. I share with you the seven principles that made all the difference for me and for the hundreds of people that I trained. Trends come and go, but principles stay. Principles are the fundamental truths that have passed the test of time and are the foundation for a system. If we accept the truth and apply these immutable laws to our training, we will skyrocket our success. Number one, principle of the effective stimulus. Our body only adapts if the pain of staying the same is stronger than the pain of change. If you're an avid viewer of this channel, you might be familiar with this picture. Our training sessions should be hard enough to pass the first mark, but not too hard to inflict damage. Our bodies don't want to build muscle and we have to force them, quote unquote force them, to put more protein structures into our muscles. I recommend you to train with a rate of perceived exertion, also called RPE, of about 8 to 9, which means that you can barely do one more clean repetition voluntarily. This holds true for beginners and advanced. And note, the beginner won't injure himself as his brain will tell him to stop long before the advanced one. Our training should be a training, focusing on further improving our strengths and obliterating our weaknesses, trying to get better day by day. Number 2. Principle of the individual load. Everyone is different. Depending on our age, sex, genetic, health history, and our weightlifting experiences, we also have to train differently. This not only means the amount of weights that you put on the machines or on the bar, it also means the frequency of our training and duration. For most people it makes sense though to train about one hour. If the training takes longer than one and a half hours, it might be too taxing for our central nervous system. It also might decrease our ability to build muscles by using protein as an energy source, which means training is not an effective stimulus. Everyone should follow basic principles yet apply slight variations for their individual goals and history. Number 3 and 4. Principle of variation. These are two principles as variation must be applied in the long term and in the short term. Always remember this, if you train the same way, we stay the same. 1. We must change one third of the exercises at least two months in every training cycle, especially if you're not making any progress regarding our exercise weight. And 2. We must structure our training long term. This is also called periodization. We can't go all out all of the time in the gym. We have to implement methods that vary the intensity and frequency of our training. Ideally, we plan our goals and training styles 6 months in advance. Yes, you heard it right. Having in total 3 phases in the structure. Build up performance and recovery. In every of these phases, the repetition range, exercise selection and frequency heavily differs. While such a proficient planning is not necessary for a beginner, these tactics should be planned and implemented if we are advanced gym goers looking to fulfill our true potential. Number 5. Principle of specificity. The reason marathon runners are not packed with muscles is because jogging for long distance is putting more strain on our cardiovascular system than on our protein structures. Remember that our body only adapts to what it needs to. This means that we have to pay special attention to our repetition range and how we structure our training units. I recommend training with about 6 to 12 repetitions. 2 to 3 sets and about 6 to 8 exercises if our main goal is to improve muscle growth. Also aim for rest periods between the sets of about 1 to 3 minutes, depending on our repetition range. And most importantly, we should strive to improve our weights over time, not our repetitions. If you do 100 push-ups, it won't change our physique. If you do 10 push-ups with ever increasing weight on our back, it's a different story. Progress of the weights is key. Number 6. Principle of regular training. No one gets big from one training in the gym. If we want to see progress, we have to train regularly. If we train once a week, we may be able to see progress as a beginner and if you're an advanced lifter, you may be able to maintain your muscle mass like that, but it's never enough 
to make progress. Always train more than twice per week if you're serious about getting results. If you're an advanced lifter and want to see progress, aim for at least three to four times per week, depending if you still see progress or not. Number seven, principle of super compensation. The first principle was about the effective training stimulus. But as we all know, the muscle growth happens in the recovery. Training itself is an immense stress for our body. What makes exercise healthy are actually the couple hours following the workout. Allow yourself at least 48 hours rest of the muscle part after each training. Which means training twice per week on consecutive days is not as effective as having rest periods between these two days and splitting them out evenly over the week. These were the seven training principles that have helped me boost my muscle growth. In a short recap, the principle of the effective stimulus, which makes sure that our training is truly training. The principle of the individual load, which emphasizes the fact that we all individuals, we all still need a slightly different training. The two principles of variation, which makes us understand that if we train the same, we stay the same. The principle of specificity, which explains that our body only adapts to what it needs to. The principle of regular training, which states that we have to be committed at least twice per week to reach our goals. The principle of supercompensation. What truly matters is recovery and its relation to stress periods. Principles are laws that have passed the test of time and have been followed since generations. Why not apply this proven blueprint to our own life, to your success? If you like this video and want to know more about fitness, nutrition, mindset and health and how these things can help you get the most out of your life, subscribe to this channel.